Hello, we're going to talk about management of cornea obstruction. I'm Marvin Eng. These are my disclosures. This is a case with a low left main. Uh, we're going to do a valve and valve taver, and the sinuses are very small. So, cornea obstruction occurs mostly in valve and valve cases, but still it can occur in nearly aortic valve cases, less than 1% of the time. And as you can see, mostly it's the left coronary vessel that becomes obstructed. Occasionally, you do, do get both vessels. Um, and it's a catastrophic event with EKG changes, hypotension, ST segment elevation, V-fib. Um, a lot of patients die. And if they don't die, they have associated acute renal failure, uh, major or life-threatening bleeding associated with their cases. Most of the time, these patients have lo lower left mains or coronary vessels and very narrow sinuses. This predis predisposes people to cornea obstruction. As you can see here, uh, on average, the, the coronary heights are lower with smaller sinus of Valsalva, but it's not exclusively low coronaries that can result in cornea obstruction. The type of valve matters. You can see that patients with externally mounted leaflets have more cornea obstruction followed by stentless valves and then valves with internally mounted leaflets. Uh, this virtual ring that's drawn through the posts here represents the final position of the bowel prosthetic valve leaflets. And it makes sense that the closer they are to the ostium, the more likely you're going to obstruct. And this is what they observed here uh, when they saw people who did have coronary obstruction. Other risks include post dilation, but otherwise uh, most of the risks have already been described. Uh, small size of Valsalva, externally mounted leaflets, small virtual ringed coronary distances. So this is that degenerative valve that we saw earlier on CT. We're performing a valve and valve using a, a blue expandable valve, and there is a wire and a stent protecting the left main. You can see that there is flow, um, but this may be deceiving because we do have a stent and a wire in the coronary and we decide to stent the left main because we think the coronary is jeopardized. As you can see, post-stenting, the left main is slightly patent. In this multi-center registry, you can see that protecting with stents um, instead of wire does seem to confer uh, less death uh, when doing these cases. Um, there was more myocardial infarction, and that could be related to late uh, events. Uh, but uh, it seems that coronary protection with stents as an upfront strategy is preferred compared to just using a wire. When using a wire, there were some delayed coronary occlusions with both self-expanding and balloon expandable valves. Um, this is another case of a low left main and a bulky coronary leaflet. Uh, you can see here that uh, the size of Valsalva is wider. Uh, so we thought this was a borderline case. So we proceed with coronary protection. It was not a candidate for basilica due to the excessive calcification of the left coronary leaflet. And as you can see, after standard valve implantation, there was Timmy 3 flow. Uh, we thought this was borderline, so we just pulled the wire back and we thought there was still flow in the left main. We proceeded with getting a large bore hemostasis. However, there was hypotension immediately afterwards. Um, so, we quickly performed an, an aortogram, which demonstrated TMI2 flow, uh, put an impella in, also uh, wired the coronary vessel and performed an angioplasty. After reestablishing TMI3 flow, we IVISed, and we observed that the leaf was smashed up against the uh, sinotubular junction. And then we uh, put a, a large bare metal stent in, and this resulted in TMI3 flow, and uh, no longer was the patient ischemic. When you look at mortality with PCI, it's high even with a successful case. It's pretty high with cabbage, 50% of those patients die. And if they're unsuccessful, um, a lot of them die. Um, coronary protection is important and it has to be the upfront strategy. So when they didn't protect, you get nine times more death, myocardial infarction, and cardiogenic shock at 30 days. Um, and if you do fail, at least half your cases will die. Um, most of them will die within 30 days. 
And the reasons for being unsuccessful range from cannulation failure, crossing failure, and inability to cross with stents. Uh, there are some late events that occur uh, despite uh, putting stents in the coronary ostia, uh, and they can occur out two, three years out, uh, two, three years out. And it's often due to uh, restenosis of the stents uh, that get placed, uh, either from the frame or the leaflet. Uh, the presentation is variable. Uh, like I said, it can be very remote uh, from the day of the procedure, and uh, presentations range from cardiac arrest all the way down to stable angina. Uh, finally, there's another patient with small sinuses and a low coronary height. We're implanting a 23 millimeter valve. Uh, therefore, we want to protect the left coronary, and this time we decide to use uh, intentional laceration of the coronary leaflet. Uh, here we engage the left main with the coronary catheter and we uh, co-register the predicted angles for crossing uh, so that we uh, can be sure that they're satisfactory. Here we have a guide uh, in the LV that will be used to hold a snare to catch the crossing wire and we have a guide that's engaging the left coronary leaflet uh, so that we can cross. Uh, here is a TE uh, confirming our location in front of the coronary uh, ostium. We cross with an Astato 20 and an accompanied 50 watts of uh, energy, uh, and we traverse the leaflet. We uh, snare the wire and create a cutting mechanism and then lacerate the left coronary leaflet. Uh, results in severe aortic insufficiency, as you can imagine, and proceed with uh, valve implantation. Uh, which was uh, successful and associated with uh, very minor aortic insufficiency. Uh, you can see by aerotography that the left main is widely patent and there's too many to be This just illustrates the importance of uh, developing your uh, traversal plan uh, so that your guides and wires can cross the leaflets um, in the center and uh, cause appropriate laceration of the leaflets to prevent coronary obstruction. And Basilica study, uh, when you looked at the 30 patients, Basilica was successful 93% of the time. Um, there was no coronary obstruction in any of the cases. Uh, of note, there were strokes, uh, three of them. Uh, therefore, we do recommend use of cerebral embolic protection whenever possible. There are some dedicated catheters made by Medtronic. In summary, coronary obstruction is a deadly event. Uh, the risks include low coronary height, small sinus, small VTC, and um, valves with external amounts of leaflets. Uh, pre and stent placement is very common. You should be on guard for some late obstructions. Basilica is a challenging procedure and it seems to prevent obstruction, and um, you should be proctored for the first few cases. Thank you.